Hello everyone, this is Il Capo Jason Gotti, your host with the most, one of the best unsigned professional wrestlers in the game today. And what you are listening to now is the Ring Fever Radio Show, where the fans are the stars. Okay, we're back here again, once again, Ring Fever Radio Show. Tonight I'm going to interview uh, a good friend of mine. Who's also a crazy son of a bitch, the owner of uh, Classic Championship Wrestling, the one and only Rob Noxious. Rob, how's it going tonight? Hey man, it's going good. How about you? Ah, you know, it could be better. Whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, let me ask you a couple questions. I'm gonna ask you questions about your wrestling career and uh, stuff like that, and uh, we'll take it from there. What uh, what made you want to be a wrestler? Uh, you want the truth? Yeah, I do. No, I want you to lie to me, asshole. Of course I want the truth. <laughs> well, listen, hey, um, the truth is, in the beginning, I had no thoughts of being a professional wrestler. Um, my brother went to jail, and uh, he met Steve Blackman. Steve Blackman used to be a correctional officer. Uh-huh. And uh, we, uh, my brother got out of jail, and he was like, hey, you want to wrestle? Because I always watched it. I actually turned him on to, to watching wrestling. Yeah. You know, and I was, you know, I wasn't always a fat ass, you know, I was a skinny kid and, you know, liked the girls and I sang a lot. So, you know, I had my own music group and, you know, I I never really thought about wrestling, you know, or catching a bug, you know. So, so I did some research to see, you know, who Steve Blackman was because at the time he wasn't even on WWE TV yet. He was still, um going back and forth to Canada, so. What year was this, Rob? Research. Rob, real quick, what year was this that you that you broke in, that you started, uh, you're saying about Blackman? What year? Say that, again. Say that again, I didn't hear you. What year was this that uh, you met Blackman and you started to, like, you break in? Uh, I um, started training in 1991. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, it was that long ago. So, so, so you met Blackman, go ahead. So, so we met Blackman, uh, started paying him money to train. We uh, we originally started training in a barn, taking bumps on a dirt wood floor. Uh, it was actually really, really bizarre. Oh, my God. You know, and then uh, we moved to some match that he had. And then uh, his partner, his name was uh, Johnny Rebel. And Johnny Rebel... Uh, he was this guy who did ring rentals for, well, not actually ring rentals. He, he built the ring for WCW. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And so he was moonlighting the WCW ring, doing ring rentals with it on the side. WCW had no clue. And they also were training people in that ring. Okay. So we were on the show, and Warlord and the Barbarian and all these guys were on it. And they went back and told WCW, WCW that they wrestled in the WCW ring. And they found out that it was Ron who had the ring. They confiscated it. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, it sucked bad because neither one of them called us and told us that there was no more school. <laughs> hey, welcome to the business, Rob. I can I can share a couple of stories, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, I do know what you're it saying. Was crazy. We, I drove like two hours to get where I was going, and I looked in the garage door, and I'm like, "The ring." I mean, I was, I was, it, it was crazy, you know. You pay money, and then you, yeah. you, you know the deal. No, oh, dude, I, I know the fucking deal. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, luckily through Blackman, I met Mark Mask, you know, and I got introduced to a man named John Graham who actually lived like maybe 15 miles from where I lived. And he wanted to train me down at um, Mark Mast. So we went there every other day, drove two hours every other day, back wow. and forth after work. Now, was was uh, was Mast School still in uh, Blandon, like when we tra- uh, when we trained up there, or uh, no? Yes, it was. Actually, at the time, I guess Mark was, was just being done with Jimmy Dio because it used to be like Gio, Jimmy, Jimmy Dio's dungeon or something. Okay. I forget. Okay. So, but, you know, 
that's that's how it came about. You know, I ended up training with Johnny Graham and Mark Best and Troy Mass. You know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know, uh, I know most of those guys. I I, I never uh, met Graham. But uh, now, when you first now when you first started training, like you said, you know, you had to train uh, on on the floor and everything when you when you worked uh, or uh, met Blackman. Now, when when you when you uh, started to go to the uh, Mess Brothers School, tell us a little bit of uh, what like training was like, because not everybody here, you know, knows necessarily like what wrestling training is like. You know, we do, but uh, there's gonna be a lot of people listening that doesn't. So, just give us a little uh, about that. Um. Well, you know, the two-hour drive, for one, you know, that, that gets old. You know, it's two hours down, two hours back, so that's four hours out of your time. Yeah. And, you know, Mark had this ring. I, I, don't, I don't care what anybody says. That third floor felt a lot softer than Mark's one ring. Yeah. You know, it, it was really hard. Um, it hurt a lot, you know. Yeah. I think I splashed my, my Mark a few times and thought I broke my ribs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, that's... That's, uh, that's, I, dude, fucking, his, his ring is stiff as shit, cause I, you know, we've, we've all worked in his ring a couple times, so I know, I know exactly what you mean, you take your bump and it's like, oh, what the fuck, especially if you're not, uh, not used to it, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why when we were, when we were training that day, you know, you know, I, I, I am a lot older, so, you know, I had the younger guys taking the bumps with you more than I was. That day. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a so, I'm a stubborn motherfucker though, man. I kept wanting to do uh kept do it though. That's that's one thing about me. I got a lot of heart. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, you know, and, and and I think everybody should always train, man, no matter no matter how much you think you're a superstar or get over with the fans, you know, you should always find a ring, find a school and you know, train with somebody. Even if the people aren't the best trainers, you know, you can still learn something from everybody. Yeah, you know, just just get uh, just get some uh, ring time in, especially if you don't work a lot. I I, I agree with that. You know, just get some ring time yeah. in and, and and stuff like that. But I think you know what it is too. I think the problem too, and I think you can definitely agree to this because you have your own school, which we'll uh, talk about you know a little bit later. Um, there's so many thieves and 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 people that you know what you're right don't know what they're doing. Now, when I say they don't know what they're doing, you know. The, it's it's a broad spectrum because, you know, not everybody can be fucking Shawn Michaels. We know that, okay? But then there's guys that really don't know what they're doing, and you can risk getting injured, and they'll try to take advantage of you. They'll play on uh, your emotions and on uh, what, you know, your desires and dreams. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a con man's business, which is a shame. Not everybody's a con man. But as you know, and I know, there's a lot of motherfuckers out there that are like that, that are like the shiesty used car salesmen. And uh, not everybody's like me and you where, uh, you know, we'll get mad and tell you like it is. And in wrestling, that actually hurts you. Am I wrong? Oh, dude, I, listen, there was just been so many places where I was booked and then because I wouldn't kiss nobody's fucking ass, you know, I got off the show or, you know, I mean, I, let me tell you how shite these people are in this business. I mean, I know you know, but <laughs> one time me and Jay Money went to this, to this show. And it was very bad. Me, I was on the show at the time. I, I won't say the letters of the company or anything, okay. but the, the show was so bad, and, and me and Money wrestled on it. And uh, as soon as we get to the back, you know, me and Money had a kick-ass match. As soon as we get to the back, they're like, "Don't ever fucking do that again." Oh shit! I already know the the, the letters. Of the company. You can fucking say whatever you want if you want. But go ahead, continue. I already know this story, but go ahead. The fans don't. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Like, there's shady bitches everywhere, man, you know? Yeah. And there's so many people that that promise a bunch of kids, you know, that they're going to get them in the WWE, they're going to get them in TNA, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, when people come to my school, you know, I, I don't I don't claim to know everything about wrestling. Yeah. You know, I, I just know that I have a passion for it. And, you know, what what, what I know, I try to... Give to everyone. I can give my knowledge to everybody I possibly can. Yeah. Whoever wants to hear it. You know, and and the first thing I say when people go, "Hey, I want to be a wrestler," you know, I'll I'll, I'll ask them why they want to be a wrestler, who's their favorite wrestler, and then I will tell them, 
and I'm upfront about it. I go, you know, I can make you a wrestler, but I will never promise you that I will get you to the WWE or TNA. Exactly. You got You got You got to be upfront and honest because there's there's people out there that necessarily you know they'll watch it on TV, right? And you know, oh well, maybe I can be go to WWE and just to make a lot of money. They don't have the passion for it and shit like that. And uh, the top stars, in my opinion, and, and many other guys that uh, were successful doing this were fans. I mean, you look at someone like Triple H, right? Okay, he's he is a great worker. Let's let's be honest, all right? He is, but he was a huge fan, like me and you. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, yes, I agree with that. Listen, man, I, if my mom's house wanted to burn down, I had so many videos of wrestling. I recorded wrestling every Saturday, every Monday, every Thursday. You know what I mean? Yeah. I recorded it all, man. And I had such a library of wrestling, it was, it was ridiculous. I, I, know, I know exactly what you mean. I used to do the same thing. When I was a kid, you know, younger, well, I'm still young, but when I was a kid, kid, I used to uh, always do that shit, like uh, take BCW, SmackDown, even like indie feds. They used to uh, in WGTW, they used to have uh, like indie feds on there when ECW got off there, like NWA Wildside was on there and stuff like that. I used to just whatever wrestling I could uh, watch, I wanted to watch. So I know what you mean. Yeah, dude. Listen, there was, I used to get this old wrestling out of uh, what was it? I think Tennessee. It was um, CWF. It was with, um, like, Scott Steiner was on it before anybody knew who Scott Steiner was. Yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, Vicious was on it before they knew who he was, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I used to I used to unplug the cable and put the rabbit ears on because that was the only way you could get this show. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. So. That's cool, man. Well, you know what? You Like, the, you know, if you have a passion for something you're always going to want to you know strive to be better and everything like that and you know and and you're going to be really in it and listen you definitely do have a passion for wrestling and uh you know i'm I'm interviewing you now as a host but we're also friends and uh as you know i want to fucking kill you a lot of times because we don't agree when it comes to wrestling (laughs) and i know you want to kill me too but uh outside of the ring i will say this because the fans that don't know you you really are a true loyal uh loving caring person and uh you know, I'm proud to call you a friend in wrestling because I don't have many uh, wrestling friends. And, uh, you know, I always remember. That's why when I get mad at you, I always remember that uh, you're still Rob, my friend. You know what I mean? So I just want to put that out there publicly. I appreciate that, man. I, I really do. Yeah. You know, so, I, I mean, I, friendship is like a, to me, it's, you know what I mean? It's just like wrestling, you know? I'm real with my friends and I'm real with, with professional wrestling. Yeah. You know, it's like you have to be loyal. You know, if, if you're not loyal, then why call somebody your friend? It, dude, I, I, seriously, I fucking know. I agree with you. I, I totally agree. I, I don't like, I don't like that phony bullshit either. You know, I hate that shit. It drives me nuts. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you know, it's like I, you know, I, I've met a, a couple of young guys recently. You know, and since I now have the company, you know, all these guys want to call me sir and you know just like kiss my ass, and I'm just like. Look, dude, you don't have to kiss my ass. If we're talking and you work good, I'll let you on the show. Exactly. You don't need to kiss my ass. There's no need for that. Just be yourself, you know. Exactly. And uh, yeah, man. I mean, I remember uh, when you when you first when you first uh, booked me. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, I I you know took a couple of years off, and I really didn't have that many matches before. We know my story. You know, I've talked about it on my show, but um. You know, I remember uh, you liked me because, you know, I was respectful to you and, you know, I didn't kiss your ass. And I and I think that's yeah. why uh, you brought me back. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly why I brought you back. Because you even said to me, you go, did you watch my match? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> which, which is a common thing between us. <laughs> and, you and you respect this business. And that's why I did it. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You know, yeah, you, know, you, have, you have my back, man. And, uh. I always, uh, you know, let's be real. I haven't wrestled for CCW since what January, right? I think it was January. So I'm gonna come yeah. back in uh, November. That's that's almost a year. But uh, you know, we we've we had our little dumb problems, but it's it's nothing serious because we're friends. And you know what? We don't. All right, let's be real. We both might you know get a little nuts with shit. Okay, I can admit that. You know, 
But at the end of the day, you know, we, we calm down and we realize things. But, um, you know, CCW, you know, for all the fans that don't know, CCW was the first place that actually gave me a break. You know, it took me a long time to get a break. And a break is, you know, uh, be more featured in, in a promotion. You know what I mean? And it took me years. And uh, this guy right here that I'm interviewing did give me a break. You know what I mean? And this is uh, this is before we became really friend friends because we're good friends now. But um, I always appreciated that. You know what I mean? And that's why, you know, I always is, is something that I remember. You know what I mean? That's why I'm always going to be a CCW guy. No matter where yeah, I get that's mad that's at him or shit cool. happens, you know? So. Yeah, that's cool. I appreciate that. It, but, it, you know, it's just, you know, I, and it's about being loyal, you know? And, you know, you, you, you're you loyal, you know, you're a friend, you're yeah. loyal as a friend. You know, you you help me out a lot with things. You helped out with advertising for us. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and you didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? You live, what? Two hours from me? Actually, Three hours? about two and a half almost. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? So you, you didn't have to do none of that, you know? And, but it's, it's your, you know, your loyalty to this business, you know? It's, it's your way of being passionate about this business by helping out somebody else. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And you're, you're, the, you're so, the same way, man. I mean, you, uh, I've seen you take a lot of guys, uh, you know, that, that, you know, I don't want to, uh, how can I say this? Um, you know, I got to be real about it, though. Guys that, that maybe are uh, kind of misfits, and uh, you know maybe uh, socially they're awkward, and uh, you you know you, you make them feel like they're a part of something. You don't bullshit them, you don't lie them, you don't baby them, and I'm glad that you do that because you don't give a false sense of uh, security. You make people uh, wrestling wise earn what they get, but at the same time, you're, you you also care about them, and I've always told you that. You know what I mean? I said you know you do care about your students because you know how I was trained initially and how I fucking can't stand them to um because they dick me but you know not that that that'll never happen with you as long as you uh those people do the same for you and treat you with the same respect you know I mean you know in your school you know I haven't really gotten a chance to get up there because it's so fucking far Lewistown's far as shit you know what I mean I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, I'm gonna tell you something that might make your day right. I'm actually in talks right now with a place in Hershey oh really that's closer yeah cool that's a lot closer that's what's up. So, That's what's up. So yeah. So I'll have a, I'll have one hopefully down here near my area, and then one up in Lewistown. So that'd be cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, man. That'd be cool. You know, it's it's more it's more uh, realistic now too that I'm that I'm working nights. So I mean, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk off the air. We'll figure something out with that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> um. So yeah. So why don't you talk a little bit about uh about your school, Rob? Why don't you talk about uh your training center? Um. We got two rings. We got we got let me see. I think eight students. Um, they're all working shows. You know, I, I don't just you know I, I don't just get people who promise them. You know, hey, you come and wrestle for me. You know, you you let me train you. I'll get you on my shows. I'll make you champion. I'll get you to WWE. You know, it's not that simple. You know, we. I make people try out. You know, we, we, we have a very serious tryout. You know what I mean? I mean, we don't we don't hit nobody during our tryout. We don't kick nobody. We don't body slam nobody during our tryout. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's basically, we, we have them do a cardio program that kicks their ass. And, you know, they puke a lot. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, you know, it's to show them that, you know, when you're in the ring, you know, you're moving constantly. Yeah. You know? I mean, you, you know, there's rest spots, of course, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a different kind of cardio that nobody can compare to. You're right. You know? and you're so, right. Seriously, you're absolutely right, man. You know, I mean, there's times I get crazy at the school and yell and scream, you know, and, but it's like, you know, I, I promised myself when I was younger, you know, that, all these fake ass people in wrestling, which believe me, I'd say fucking ninety percent of them are fucking fake. Oh, oh, I know. You know? You're right. You're right. You know, I, I worked for many companies that kiss your fucking ass <laughs> and talk shit about you as soon as you leave. You know. Yeah. Yep. It's like I, I, I hate when I'm on shows with people and they're like, "Oh, that was a great match. That was a great match," and they fucking 
kick a guy, you know, that my, my little cousin, you know, who just turned a year, could kick harder than they did. And, and they're doing this in front of fans that are like fucking 10 feet away from them. You know, and they're kicking all light. And they're going, oh, that was a great match. You know, no, you're exposing the business, you asshole. Yeah. Oh, you know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know, so, you know, I yell, I, I yell at my students a lot, you know. Um, we just had a match in uh, ECW. It was uh, my student, uh, Stefan, who's one of my sons, uh, my son, Petey, was on the opposite team. It was me and Stefan versus Petey and, and uh, Jamal. Yeah. Uh, Jamal screwed up the finish. You know, and I screamed at him. I yelled at him in the back. You know, my other guys are like, hey, that was a good match. I was like, no, don't lie to him. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. Like, exactly. Tell the truth. You fucked up the finish. So I'm going to yell at you because that's what the fans are going to remember. Exactly. Exactly. And listen, you know, let, let's get it clear. You're not yelling at, because uh, people don't know Jamal, um, you're not yelling at him to be an asshole. <laughs> you're yelling at him because you care and you want him to do better. Am I wrong? No, no, you, you, you're completely right. It, I wasn't yelling at him in the sense of, you fucking asshole, you messed up, you messed up. It's like, you know, you screwed up the finish. This is what you did wrong, and this is what you need to do to get it right, you know? Exactly. And he, you know, he, he kind of got messed up because <clears throat> the match before, there was a promo, and they led into another match, and you know what I mean? He's young, he was nervous. You know, it, it, he messed up, so... But he, knew, he, he knows what he did wrong, and, you know, he'll fix it. Exactly. You can only learn from your mistakes. And see, everybody <coughs> everybody makes mistakes, you know. And it's like, uh, it's like if because, you know, my, my show, I talk about fighting a lot. That's basically what the show is and other things, too. You know, guys that lose, right, sometimes it's good to lose, okay, because then you learn from your loss, and you learn, you know, what you can do to get better. So it's, it's okay to mess up, you understand? Especially in the beginning. You know, but it's how you act when you mess up, and if you learn from it, all right? I, you know, I still fucking mess up, you know what I mean? Everybody does. That's why there's Botchamania, WWE superstars do. But it's the way that you learn from your mistake. Will you continue to make the same mistake, or will you learn from it, you know what I mean? And and, and try to be better, you know what I mean? And, and that's exactly how I think, uh, I know I'm like that, and I know you're like that, so... That's yeah, a good attitude yeah, to have, you know? Nobody's perfect, man. Nobody's perfect. I mean, and, and, you know, you see in WWE that when, you know, that they have different camera angles, and one of the reasons they have different camera angles is for when people mess up. So exactly. I mean? Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, everybody isn't perfect. I don't... Everyone has messed up in a match. Yeah. So. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Everybody has. Speaking of that, that's what happened last night. <laughs> <laughs> You want to talk about that, boss? Oh, man. I wrestled one of my students last night. All right. Who is over. I mean, this kid came out and the place just erupted. You know what I mean? Like, you, you would have thought Tommy Dreamer came out. The Road Warrior pop, huh? You got the Road Warrior pop? Yeah. Man, this, this kid, is, his name's Matt Silks, and he he's over, man. He's over big time. You know, this is his hometown, and he gets this ovation like it's unbelievable, you know? And he just, he messed up the beginning, and he blanked. Oh, and shit. no matter what I did, I couldn't get him back into the match. Shit. And so it's like I dropped him out, you know? And it was, it was, I don't know, it could have been great. I thought it was going to be great. And he, you know, he was like, I'm nervous because you're excited. I'm like, I'm excited because I have faith in you. Yeah. You know, and he just blanked and it just, you know, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a mess up to the point where, you know, we got the, you fucked up chant. You know, nobody, nobody noticed the mess ups. It was like, they were covered that well. You know, you, you have to be a worker to understand how we messed up. Exactly. I know what you mean. You know, but me, I thought it was a total cluster. Yeah. And, you know, if there was a folding chair around, I probably would have hit him in the ref a couple of times, but... <laughs> You're a fucking whack job. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you know, the best, part, the best part of the whole match was uh, <coughs> his brother turned on him, and, you know, all morning long, my, my phone was blowing up with Facebook comments about, how could you turn... 
turned his brother against him. What the hell is wrong with you? And it was great. <laughs> you know? You did your job. So, you did your job. Yeah. You made him believe. Yeah, so. so, you know? Yeah, it was cool. That, that That's what's up. So, um... <clears throat> All right. Well, you know what, Rob? Listen, you know, it was good talking to you. Uh, I'd like to continue this interview with you next week, if that's all right with you. Uh, would that be all right with you? I think the fans would uh, like to continue to hear your story. Awesome. All right. Hopefully they will. They will. They will. You got my word. I'll continue this with you next week. All right, buddy. Well, that was uh, Rob Noxious, the uh, owner of uh, CCW. Next week on uh, the Ring Fever Radio Show. We will uh, continue Rob's uh, story and journey into this wild and crazy world of professional wrestling. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and tune in next week. Ring Fever, where the fans are the stars. And like I said before, hey, Rob, let me tell you, there is no cure. (laughs) Thanks, man.